The Spectrum flight log offers several unique advantages. First off, the Spectrum flight log plugs into the AR9300 in the data port, and it, what it allows you to do is it allows you to verify the RF link performance. So the way the flight log works, it plugs into your data port. I have a receiver here, and there's the data port, and it plugs in like so. And, of course, when you power it up, you have a screen, and the screen, the first thing that's visible on the screen is voltage. So that's your receiver pack active voltage. I push this button, and it says A, and those are called antenna fades. So uh, an antenna fade is each individual antenna, and it's a bit loss of each antenna. It's the smallest possible loss of an antenna. So you have antenna A fades, then you push it again, it's antenna B fades. Those are the two internal antennas. Then you have an L fade, which is your left antenna, and then an R fade, that's the right antenna. The left and right antennas are your external or remote antennas, for example, this antenna. If you only have one antenna plugged in, then you'll get a number reading in like L, for example, but the one that's not plugged in will just have dash, dash, dash. And I'll tell you, I would highly recommend, this is very lightweight, I would highly recommend in most applications to just servo tape this in place. And then after every flight, or if you ever have a question, you can simply push this button after the flight and it'll tell you how things perform. So we just plug this in, and then when we turn the system on, you'll see that this is displaying, and in this case it's reading 4.7 volts. And then as I push the button, I scroll through the various functions of the receiver. The fades are individual bit losses of each individual receiver. Now, if all those receivers have a simultaneous fade or loss of signal, then you have what's called a frame loss. So frame losses are all antennas, all receivers are losing signal simultaneously. That's a frame loss. And then when you push the button again, that's the F. That's what the F stands for. Now an H is called a hold, and we all know what a hold is. A hold is when the airplane goes into failsafe. So it takes 45 continuous frame losses to create a hold. So the method that we recommend is hook your flight log up and have your helper pace 30 paces away, and you hold your transmitter in your normal conventional position, and your helper advances the flight log until it says F. So he's looking at frame losses. Now your helper holds your aircraft and he rotates the aircraft in all possible positions. Nose up, nose down, tail in, all the positions that you're normally going to see in flight. While he does this, you press the range check button. In this case, you press the button back here on the 12X. Each transmitter is slightly different. You press the button and you hold the button for one minute. So you do this process of having the transmitter in the range check mode and your partner at 30 paces away rotating the airplane in all positions. Now, a successful test will yield frame losses of less than 20 and zero holds. So after one minute time period, go through, and now by the way, the A, the B, the L, and the R will likely be very high. That is the typical configuration when you have a carbon sailplane. So it's typical for the carbon to block out the, ten, the antennas individually, but the key point is that two of the antennas should always be in contact. So as long as an antenna is in contact with the RF link, you, sh you should never have a, fa a fade. And of course it takes, or a frame loss, of course it takes 45 frame losses to have a hold. So after you do this test, take a look. Don't worry so much about the fades, those will be fairly high, but look at the frame losses. And like I said, frame losses should be less than 20, holds should be zero. Now the next thing you do after you get a successful ground test is do exactly the same thing, but do it with a short flight. So with a sailplane like this, I would take it up on a winch or a high start, and I would take up maybe three or four hundred feet. So don't do a real high launch, you know, just an average launch, and make a short flight. Don't fly way out, just make a short flight, and then land by yourself. And after you land, again, look at the flight log. And like I said, leave the flight log in place. And if you ever have a flight where it's questionable, you know, sometimes you get some unusual air, some strange lift or whatever, and you say, boy, was that a hit or whatever, land. And if you have a hold, you know that there could be an issue with the radio. If you don't have any holds, then you know that, hey, I had some goofy air that I just flew through. So that's the beautiful thing about the Spectrum system, and that's what actually allows us 
to make the AR-9300 perform flawlessly in this critical setup in that um, you're, you're able to test this first on the ground and then using short flights. It absolutely minimizes the risk to your aircraft by doing this.